the build show today coming to you from the foothills of Whistler Mountain. I got to tour this incredible passive house being built by Mike, a design build builder, and Pierre, the consultant. And I got to tell you, I was absolutely blown away by some of the details on this house. Very smart construction, very thick insulation, very airtight. And oh, by the way, this house is being built in a flood zone. So the first several feet of the house need to be flood hardy. Today's build show is sponsored by Sega Anatech Windows and Quadlock. Let's get going. All right, guys, I'm at a passive house under construction. I've got Mike with Blue Water Group. I've got Pierre, the consultant. And I got to tell you, this house is blowing my mind. There's some crazy details here that are simple, but really totally profound. All right, so so let's see if we can explain, Mike, because honestly, this is not a he easy house to explain. Yeah, let's see if we can explain to people what's going on. So first off, the house is a relatively simple shape, right? It kind of reminds me of a Monopoly piece, like the Monopoly houses, right? Yeah. Um, but walk me through what you did for the foundation, which I have never heard of before. Right, so the foundation on this building, because we're in the flood construction level, um, we're also on an old riverbed, uh -huh. so there's a lot of sand, a lot yep. of silt. Um, so we ended up excavating down six feet, bringing that back up with structural material. Okay, so um, you've got compacted road base basically underneath. Some big, like two foot plus, two foot minus, like big boulders. Okay. Is what we actually put down there first. Interesting. And then we filled that in with some smaller stuff and then eventually three quarter crush, um, some road base and some really good drainage. Um, and then from there, the foundation actually sits on two 11 inch slabs of structural foam. 11 inch times two yeah. <laughs> structural foam. The entire house, everything below, well, we're not on right now, but down below where the concrete is, we've got 22 inches of foam. Yeah. Now that's not regular yeah. foam, right? What is that? No, it's structural foam. So super dense, super, um, like you can't compact it. You can, you know, put thousands and thousands of pounds. It's what they use to build highways and roads yeah. and bridge abutments and all that kind of stuff. Works as a really good thermal break between our basement slab and the, and the ground outside. So your basement slab is basically sitting on, I think you called it up here, a, a raft, yes. right? A yeah. raft slab of insulation. And when I walked up, the first thing I noticed was you've got this like little metal uh, chamfered edge detail and I couldn't figure that out. That's because your insulation is going past and has a good chamfer so that that ground temperature is not coming up to that slab, right? And then you showed me some pictures, Mike, of forming up your slab where you have a, you have a, uh, like a green, looks like a tarp basically that goes down, kind of like a, well, I've used a lot of stego in my market, but it's basically a vapor barrier that's gonna also be an air barrier for you, right? Talk to me about how you formed up that slab. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's a, it's a 15 mil thick air barrier, okay. vapor barrier that goes down underneath. So on top of that 22 inches of foam, we wrapped it with a two by 10 form around the outside. Okay. Um, that goes on top of that um, air barrier. Mm -hmm. Air barrier sits in top, inside it, basically becomes like almost like a pool liner. Yeah. Put all your rebar inside of that, pour your concrete in, inside of that. And then, um, yeah, when you're done, you strip your form and you can see that slab edge that you're talking and about. And you have a structural slab that's on this much foam yeah. underneath it. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. And then on top of that is uh, insulated concrete form walls, that's right? right? Now, now, why ICF walls on that first floor? What, what was the purpose of that? We had to use ICF foams because we are building the floodplain. Ah, you got a floodplain, okay. So, so it needs to be flood hardy, basically. Yeah, that's right. Gotcha, that makes sense. So the ICF form sits on the edge of the, the slab, or the perimeter of the slab, yep. and goes all the way up to the first floor. And when I walked in the front door, Mike, the first thing I saw was, what the heck? Look at all that foam on the outside of your ICF. How thick is that? We added six inches all the way around the outside. So you've got already, what, probably three and three inches on the ICF, plus another six on the outside. Yeah. So that first floor wall's got like nine inches on the outside of the concrete and a couple inches inside too. That's, great. Which That's helps serious. For, yeah, it helps for thermal loss, obviously, but it also maintains the alignment for the cladding 
Uh, with the stick framework. Right, you're getting ahead of yourself. But, yeah. So let's talk about that, Pierre. So, yeah. so then we've got two by six framing. It looks like an all advanced framing, so 24 inch on centers. Yeah. And then uh, the whole house is wrapped in blue. Talk to me about that big blue tarp around the outside of the so house. So the big blue tarp is the Siga Mesh Vest, okay. which is uh, we use in this build as both to achieve two functions. The weather resisted barrier, okay. the WRP, so the waterproofing, the waterproofing, and the air barrier. Yeah, so and that's critical in the passive house, right? Is that is it? It's doing the stopping of the air duties for right. the house. That's right. And that's where you come in, right? Because you got to tell Mike and his crew, here's all the details we got to get right. Because yes. if you don't get those right, you're bl you're blowing. You're wasting your your very advanced material. Yeah, yeah. got it. Yeah. Now tell me a couple details, because because uh, this is a little different. It's helpful that the house is simple, right? <laughs> um, but as that air barrier comes up, that blue my vest comes up, what happens at the ceiling plane above us here? So we typically have two choices. Either we follow the roof line, mm -hmm. if we have a cathedral ceiling. In that, in this uh, project, we have a flat ceiling. Yep. So we build a non-structural deck. Okay. And our air barrier goes up the wall, up the ceiling of the wall. And above that deck. Oh, and goes down. genius. I love it. And then the trusses are dropped in and further insulation is added. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Yeah. All right, so so then, Mike, earlier you said you've got that uh, underneath the slab, you've got this this uh, air barrier. I forget which product you use there. It's called the Perminator. The Perminator, which <laughs> is down there. That's just laid out, yep. uh, filleted open. Yep. Then your new Dura comes up, and then I'm assuming you wrap that up. And then the basement waterproofing, which is that new Dura peel and stick, touches that, so that's continuous. That's correct. And then how do we attach the my vest to the uh, new Dura? So the Maj vest actually comes down on top of our um, on top of the new Dura, and then we end up just simply taping it with wig glove. Okay. So the gotcha. wig glove all the way around. Got it. Um, and then that my vest comes all the way up the walls, all the way on top of the entire roof deck. Yep. And that's right above us here. So this, this deck we're seeing here above that is going to get insulated. How does that process work? Yeah, so on top of what you're actually seeing here, on top of the Majvis, we have an inch and a half of rock wool insulation, okay. um, which goes underneath the trusses. And then we dropped all the trusses on top. And then the, ah. between the bottom cords of the trusses, we actually have five and a half inches of rock wool. So you'd imagine there's no air space there. Yep. It's underneath the trusses, between the trusses. And then from there up gets another 31 inches, 32 inches of blown in cellulose. Wow. Yeah. We're talking about a serious R value in there. What, what is that here? Do you know off the top of your head? The close to 100. R100 on the top. Yeah. And then on the walls, what happens after your air barrier? You're, I'm assuming you're going to do some outside insulation as well. Yeah, so on this guy here, we have nine inches of exterior rock wool insulation. So three layers of three inch comfort board. Um, yeah, the walls were sheeted with three quarter inch plywood so that um, uh, our it. rain screen assembly is actually held on with 12 inch GRKs. Okay, and big old fat GRKs. And you can imagine installing one of those and trying to hit an inch and a half stud. Yeah. It's not going to happen every single time. Um, so that's where the three quarter inch ply came in. And your, and your engineer said, look, as long as you're screwed into three quarter ply, you're good to go. And even with 24 inch on centers, that three quarter ply was plenty strong to hold oh, those yeah. screws. Yeah. And you're not worried about, hey, where's the stud? Are we off? Exactly. Are we on? And you, if you miss, you leave it, right? Yeah. Because of the air tightness that we're going for in passive house. Um, you don't want to pull that screw and back out and leave a hole in your air barrier. That's exactly. Right. That's Which critical. you cannot fix because now your rock wall is already All right, you got nine inches of insulation in the way and you can't see it to inspect it either. And I'm also starting to understand why there's this gable framing going on here which is outboard uh, of your um, structural wall. You've got several inches of framing I couldn't quite figure out when I drove up and there's also some Tyvek up there my assumption is that's just going to be hollow space, but you're trying to flush out. Is that right? That's exactly it. Gotcha. Yeah, so we've built it up. So that's actually above our envelope. So instead of having the nine inches of rock will continue up, 
we've just kind of built a, a small TGI almost up there to take up that space. Yeah, you don't need that. You don't need that insulation up there. Exactly. Got it's it. Purely for cladding alignment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just to make it look right architecturally. Yeah. Now, what's happening on the inside of these walls, Mike? What are you doing for insulation on the inside? So inside the two by six stud cavities, it's going to get um, an R22 bat in there. Okay. So you're going to get an R22 bat, and then we've got a two inch space between that and our actual two by four service cavity. Mm -hmm. And Pierre can speak about this, but it kind of comes down to how good our um, mid-construction blower door test goes. If we're very, like if we're hitting the mark we want, then we can negate having to put that two inches of extra insulation in there and just have... That's a, that's a comfort stand. board, a rigid rock wool insulation that you're planning on putting there. Yeah. But if you're tight enough on the blower door numbers, you, you may not need it. We may not need it. Got it. Yeah. And, and what's the reasoning behind massive wall insulation? Is there any from a passive house standard? What, tell me, tell me why why the uh, why the amount and thickness of that insulation, Pierre? Um, because that you need that performance. The, the whole passive house concept is focused on giving us priority to the building envelope. Yeah, right. yeah. So it's because it's the most cost-effective way to build a building. And ultimately, you're heating this house with basically a hairdryer, right? Because there's hardly any heat load. Yeah. And uh, and I was talking to you earlier about this, Pierre. You've got you've got a decent amount of windows and doors. We're facing this beautiful mountain right here, and even with absolute killer uh, triple glazed window units, you're like at uh, you know R9 glass here, mm -hmm. a U factor of 0 0.1 something. Uh, there's still a fair amount of loss uh, through that glass. And so by going to that extra mile right. uh, on everything else means that you can still have windows. You're not living in a big dark box. That's right. Right? You can still enjoy the beautiful views of the valley and, and the, the mountain ridges. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Guys, super impressive build. I Thank think you. this is probably the most interesting, highly insulated house I've ever been to in my whole life. Mm, I wish I was here in another month to see some of these insulation yeah, details. I want to come back on a uh, cold winter day when <laughs> I can uh, feel how warm this house is. Because honestly, as a Texas boy, I'm a little cold right now. My, my toes are cold. <laughs> we are cold too. <laughs> Impressive, guys. Quite a build. Yeah. Follow along. I'll put their uh, links to social and to their websites in the uh, description below. But if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. New content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.